Okay, so parables. Um, so let's. This is going to be a little bit of an interactive session. So I hope that everyone is uh, ready tonight. Uh, parables. I know that we're all exposed to parables, and you know uh, some of the parables um, in the Bible. Can I uh, hear from you? Uh, what are some parables in the Bible? Can we name some? Either you can place it in the chat, or uh, you can unmute yourselves and. Uh, share with me what are the parables that you know. I'm sure, Maramayan. Okay, what do we have here? Parable of the talents, the lost sheep, the prodigal son. Yes, okay, mukhang the prodigal son um, is quite popular, the unforgiving servant. Yes, so we see here that there are a lot of parables um, in the Bible. So tonight, our learning objectives is... First, to identify the definition and significance of a parable. Um, what is the importance of a parable? Why does Jesus use parables to teach? Uh, and then second, of course, since um, we've done a Joy of Discovery Bible study in the past two Monday nights, uh, we will continue uh, learning how to practice the basic skills of Joy of Discovery Bible study by studying a parable. Okay, so can I hear from you? Do you remember the um, the the acronym um, for the Joy of Discovery Bible Study. What is that acronym? Let's see nga if people were listening <laughs> in the past two sessions. The acronym um, that show the general procedures in Bible study of OIC. Yeah, yes. And we're, um, let's, what, what is O? Anyone? What does O stand for? Oh, I see an observation. Yes, I. What does I stand for? What's after observation? We interpret. Yes, and then S is. Wow. I summarize. guess all of you. Yes, we summarize. And then E is. What is E? Is this valuable today? What, what is E? Evaluate. A is. There are two A's, right? What is the first A? Application. And lastly, when we do it in our lives, we call that actualization. Yes. Okay. So it seems like everyone uh, memorizes already the Joy of Discovery Bible study skills, which is uh, very good. Okay. So what is a parable? Um, okay. So I'm not a mathematician, um, but parable um, comes from the Greek word Parabole. Uh, I hope I'm saying that correctly. Para, which means alongside, and bole, which means throwing. So in the left side, you see um, a parabola, right? Like in mathematics, um, a parabola is a plane curve, which is mirror symmetrical and is approximately U-shaped, as you see here on the left. So just like a parabola, a parable also mirrors reality, it mirrors reality, but in a different direction. So this could be a new idea, um, or in some cases, like tonight, it's the teaching of Jesus. So um, para, which means alongside, also means to compare. And bole means to throw. So the sense of comparing or throwing an idea beside another is basically the heart of the word parable. Okay. So feel free to take screenshots as well to help us remember the meaning of parable. So what is a parable? A parable, um, so of course, just like in OIC, uh, we first identify the keyword. So the keyword here is parable and you define it, right? A parable is a short and simple story that teaches a moral lesson. So it teaches us something. It's a tale about um, a, sim uh, a simple and common subject to illustrate a deeper, valuable moral lesson. So if you notice um, in Jesus' parables, there are a lot of illustrations, a lot of imagery, right, that he uses to help us to understand a moral lesson. So he's trying to teach something deeper. And in order for us to understand, he uses imagery and illustrations. So a parable usually utilizes the full story to produce the spiritual lesson. So we know um, that sometimes a proverb, a metaphor, a simile, or figure of speech uh, usually centers um, on a word or a phrase or a sentence. But 
Um, the parable, on the other hand, utilizes the whole story to um, drive out a moral lesson. Okay. Okay, so why parables? Why does, teach, uh, why does Jesus use parables in his teachings? So we know um, that this is the method that all men knew. So Jews were familiar with teaching um, by parables. So what does that mean? So there was one basic difference between the Greek and the Jewish mind. The Greek loved argument for argument's sake. Whether or not the argument ever reached any conclusion did not greatly matter. However, on the other side, the Jews, they were intensely interested in reaching conclusions. And further, these conclusions had to be such that they led to action. So Jesus knew um, that was in man. So he gave us, he gave people, he gave the crowd cameo-like pictures that we call parables. So cameo-like pictures is in illustrations and um, images so that his great ideas, his teachings um, might become more understandable, more comprehensible and relatable to the people that he was talking to. So um, we know that the Jews, since the Jews were familiar uh, with teaching by parables, uh, that there were also parables in the Old Testament. So let me read one of them from 2 Sam Samuel 12, 1 to 7. So, and the Lord sent Nathan to David. So we know that Nathan is a prophet. And David, at this time, is King David. He came to him and said to him, There were two men in a certain city, the one rich and the other poor. The rich man had very many flocks and herds, but the poor man had nothing but one little ewe lamb, which he had bought. And he brought it up, and it grew up with him and with his children. It used to eat of his morsel and drink from his cup and lie in his arms, and it was like a daughter to him. Now there came a traveler to the rich man, and he was unwilling to take one of his own flock or herd to prepare for the guest who had come to him. But he took the poor man's lamb and prepared it for the man who had come to him. Then David's anger was greatly kindled against the man, and he said to Nathan, as the Lord lives, the man who has done this deserves to die. And he shall restore the lamb fourfold because he did this thing and because he had no pity. Nathan said to David, you are the man. Thus says the Lord, the God of Israel, I anointed you king over Israel and I delivered you out of the hand of Saul. So what is this parable in the Old Testament telling us? So basically, um, Nathan is telling David, um, actually, this is David's story. So at this time, um, David has already con committed murder and sin um, against Uriah and Bathsheba. So uh, the one rich man that's being um, portrayed in the parable is actually David. And the other poor um, is actually Uriah. Um, and the one little ewe lamb represents Bathsheba. And so when, when it says here, he took the poor man's lamb, um, the parable is saying that the rich man took the poor man's wife as kind of um, theft, right? Like he took something that didn't belong to him. Um, and at the end, Nathan reveals that actually, um, so we see here that David is angry with the rich man, not knowing at this time that the rich man being talked about by Nathan was actually him. And so we see here how um, a tale is telling a moral story, right? Um, uh, and even in the Old Testament, uh, parables were being used. Okay, and the method, second, the method um, is, this is the method that all men need. So parables um, are... Help, to pe help people to understand what Jesus was saying. So the Hebrew mind was intensely practical. So it needed to be concrete. Um, uh, the stories needed to be concrete in order for the Hebrews to understand uh, the teaching that Jesus was trying to communicate. So if Jesus had argued purely abstractly using only ideas um, and theories, then only a few might have understood him. And that's why Jesus taught in parables. Okay. So the principles of interpretation. Um, 
some uh, two principles that I want to call to mind as we look at a parable. So firstly, um, two things to remember is first to understand any parable properly, we need to have a knowledge of the circumstances in which it was spoken. So um, as you found out in the previous JOD session, context changes everything, right? So we want to know um, what was happening when the Lord was sharing this parable. Why was the Lord sharing this parable at that particular time? To whom was he speaking to? And usually we know that he was speaking to a crowd, right? Um, and that, that crowd included many people. It included scribes and teachers of the law. It included, included ordinary people. And it also, of course, included his disciples. So we can see here the different levels of understanding um, that the people he was speaking to had um, in terms of uh, the parables that were spoken to them. And second, um, we will do well always to remember this. It is obviously impossible to find the whole of the Christian faith in any one parable. Um, why is that? Usually, of course, the parables um, teach about uh, the kingdom of God, the kingdom of heaven. Um, but of course, uh, usually the parables only teach one idea. Um, each parable hits on a particular theme um, of the kingdom of God. So some examples regarding hearing and seeking and growing um, in the kingdom of heaven are, uh, one is the parable of the sower, which we will be studying tonight, uh, and then also the parable of the pearl of great price and the parable of the mustard seed. And all these are, um, I'm sure, very familiar to all of you. Um, uh, you mentioned some of them a while ago. So examples uh, of parables that pertain to loss and redemption um, are the parable of the prodigal son and the parable of the lost coin or the lost sheep. And then, of course, we also have parables that show love and forgiveness. We see that in the parable of the Good Samaritan, among others. So um, there are various themes that are being communicated in the parables that Jesus communicates to us. Okay, I want us to remember that a parable is not an allegory. So you might want to uh, ask, okay, so another keyword here is allegory. Um, what is an allegory? So an allegory is a story in which every person, event, and detail has an inner meaning and stands for something else. Again, an allegory is a story in which every person, event, and detail has an inner meaning and stands for something else. So it is like an extended metaphor. So what are examples of allegory? So you've he heard this before. Uh, allegories are like Animal Farm, Pilgrim's Progress, and two famous um, stories like The Chronicles of Narnia and The Lord of the Rings. Why? Because um, every person, detail, and event has an inner meaning and stands for something else. Um, however, on the other side, a parable um, is essentially a sword to stab the mind awake. Um, so it stabs men's minds awake. And therefore, its interpretation can never be that which could be discovered only after long labor in the study. So once you read the parable, um, I mean, it's good if you understand it right away, what, what the parable is communicating, but usually um, you discover its deeper meaning um, after spending a few hours, a few minutes, meditating on it, reading it, uh, looking into the meaning between the lines um, and studying what Jesus meant uh, when he taught that parable. So, it must be that one single truth the story illuminates, which leaps out to meet us, to meet us, the listener's mind. Okay, so um, that is uh, what a parable is. Uh, that is the significance of the parables. Um, so it allowed uh, the Jews to easily understand what Jesus was saying. So now let's move on um, to the practical study. We will be studying the parable of the sower. So um, I know that we don't have a whole lot of time here, but um, I want us to look at this together. May I ask someone uh, to read this for me, the parable of the sower? 
na lang po. Okay, yes please. That same day, Jesus went out of the house and sat beside the sea, and great crowds gathered about him, so that he got into a boat and sat down. And the whole crowd stood on the beach, and he told them many things in parables, saying, A sower went out to sow. And as he sowed, some seeds fell on the path, and the birds came and devoured them. Other seeds fell on rocky ground, where they did not have much soil. And immediately they sprang up, since they had no depth of soil. But when the sun rose, they were scorched. And since they had no root, they withered away. Other seeds fell among thorns, and the thorns grew up and choked them. Other seeds fell on ground soil and produced grain. Some a hundredfold, some sixty, some thirty. He went has he who has ears, let him hear. Hear then the parable of the sower. When then when anyone hears the word of the kingdom and does not understand it, the evil one comes and snatches away what was sown in his heart. This is what was sown along the path. As for what was sown on rocky ground, this is the one who hears the word and immediately receives it with joy. Yet, he has no root in himself, but endures for a while. And, uh, and when tribulations or persecutions arises on account of the word, immediately he falls away. As for what was sown among thorns, this is the one who hears the word, but the cares of the world and the deceitfulness of riches choke the word, and it proves unfruitful. As for what was sown on good soil, this is the one who hears the word and understands it. He indeed bears fruit and yields. In one case, a hundredfold, in another, sixty, and in another, thirty. Okay, thank you very much. Um, let me just stop sharing my screen here. Um, and at this time, I want to um, share with you uh, a worksheet. I don't know if this has been passed on to you, but um, I'm sending it over uh, via chat. Um, if you see it, uh, please give me a thumbs up. I hope you can see it. I've sent it. Okay, perfect. Please do open it um, and we will do this uh, together. Okay, um, firstly, I want to say as well that we might not be able to finish um, the entire worksheet, but I'm giving this to you also uh, as a future assignment um, so you can continue to practice uh, studying the, the parable um, on your own time, bring it into your own prayer time. But let me share uh, what I have here. So what you have received is uh, the worksheet for the parable of the sower. So we've read the parable. So now um, in a few minutes, let us practice observation, and only type out exactly as the parable indicates. So um, I think I will, uh, maybe let's just do um, these two verses, and then we will do uh, the following verses, 4 to 9 and 18 to 23. So let's see verse 1. So verse 1 says, That same day Jesus went out of the house and sat beside the sea. Okay, again, here, we just want to practice observation. So is there a time element that you can see here? You can feel free to unmute or uh, place it in the chat. A time element. Th that same day, Jesus went out of the house and sat beside the sea. So right here, we just want to practice um, our observation skills. What is the time element that you can see in the sentence? Any time of day that is mentioned here? Any time element when this was taking place? Okay, maybe I'll give us a head start. So um, when we are asking for the time element, uh, it says that same day. You can place that here. Again, we're just observing exactly. So you can mention here that same day. So I know that this might be a little bit tedious, um, but this is the way for us to practice our observation skills. And then hopefully as um, we're able to get the hang of it, um, we can do this more naturally and automatically when 
especially when we read our daily readings. Okay, any location that you see here. That same day, Jesus went out of the house and sat beside the sea. I see two locations here. Anyone can identify? Out of the house. Yes, out of the house. And what else? Beside the sea. Yes, exactly. <clears throat> Excited. Okay. Oh, sorry. Okay. Um, and who is the character here? Jesus and Jesus. That's right. Uh, and what was happening? So a clue a with what with what here is um the verb. What is the verb here? What are the verbs that here? Went, around. Went, oh, went yes, in. went out of the house and sat, sat, sat beside the sea. So these are, um, again, uh, just practicing our observation skills. So uh, as I mentioned, the what usually signifies, I mean, it's helpful to identify where are the verbs because what shows that there's action happening, right? Okay, so um, I will leave this to you, um, verses 1, 2, 3, and 9, to do on your own um, because I want to focus on the type of soil. So um, all of you have this worksheet already, but I want us to identify... Uh, what is the type of soil in verse 5? And as he sowed, some seeds fell along the path, and the birds came and devoured them. What is the type of soil here? Where the seeds fell. Where did the seeds fall in verse 4? Along the path. Oh, yes. Okay. Along the path. Right. What happened to the seed? What happened to the seed here in verse 4? Verse 4. There you go. I'm highlighting it so that it's easier. The birds came and devoured them. Yes. Birds, birds came and devoured them. So was there, do you think there was any growth? Yes or no? No. no growth, okay? So again, we're just um, being very keen about what is being written here. So verse 5, other seeds fell on rocky ground where they did not have much soil and immediately they sprang up since they had no depth. Rocky. Rocky ground, yes, that's right. Rocky ground. What happened to the seed? They immediately sprang up. Okay, immediately sprang up. Was there any growth? Yes. Yes, okay. Any other observation about the growth? When the sun rose, they were scorched. Yes, that's right. So that's what happened to the seed. They were scorched. Was there a reason why, uh, given by Jesus, why um, they immediately sprang up and were scorched? No depth of soil. Yes, no depth of soil. And one thing else. Oh, yeah, that's right. No depth of soil. No root. Uh, yes. Okay. So um, six, and they had no root and withered away, right? Mm -hmm. No root. Okay. So seven, let's look at seven. Other seeds fell among thorns, and the thorns grew up and choked them. What kind of soil? Hardy. Sorry? Thorns, yes. Yeah. And what happened to the yeah. seed? Grew up. We were choked. Grew up. But yes, thorns grew up and choked them. Okay, I guess you're getting the hang of this. Um, so we have, let's look at the, the ninth. 
So number nine, it says, He who has ears, let him hear. Okay. So parable of the sower explained. Now we go to verses 18. So anyone who, um, now we want to identify here uh, messages or like, um, or sentences that says, anyone, when anyone hears the word of the kingdom of God and does not understand it, the, the evil one comes and snatches away what has been sown in his heart. So what happens to the word? You also want to um, identify what usually happens to the word when it is um, heard by this particular person and how the illustration ends. So um, what happens to that word? Is it choked or um, is it received and why it ends that way? Okay, so um, let's see verse 19. When anyone hears the word of the kingdom and does not understand it, the evil one comes and snatches away what has been sown in his heart. This was sown along the path. So anyone who, he who, maybe I can start here. He, yeah, hears the word of the kingdom and does not understand it. What happens to the word? Uh, the evil one snatches away. Yes. The evil comes. Snatches away. Okay. How does the illustration end? I guess we know that it's snatched away, right? Snatch snatched away. away. Okay. So the sec uh, 20, as for what was sown on rocky ground, this is the one who hears the word and immediately receives it with joy. So anyone who hears the word, yes. And then number 21, yet he has no root in himself but endures for a while. And when tribulation or persecution arises on a core account to the word, immediately he falls away. So what happens to the word? What happens to the word here? Falls away. Um. Yes, it falls away. So maybe we can put here falls away. That's, that's the illustration that uh, that's how the illustration ends. That's right. But what happens to the word? It encounters tribulation. Yes. Tribulation. So it endures um, and there's tribulation and persecution, right? Yeah. Okay. And number 22, as for what was sown among thorns, this is the one who hears the word, but the cares of the world and the deceitfulness of riches choke the word and it proves unfruitful. What happens to the word here? Or basically anyone who? Yeah, so here's the word, but... Cares of the world. Cares of the world. Chokes the word, right? Yeah. So what happens to the word? It becomes unfruitful. Yes. So we can put that here. Becomes unfruitful. And lastly, as for what was sown on good soil, this is the one who hears the word and understands it. He indeed bears fruit and yields in one case a hundredfold, in another sixty, and in another thirty. So, yeah. anyone who hears the word and understands it. Yes. So you can see the pattern here, right? What happens to the word? Bears fruit. Yes, bears fruit. Means. Bears fruit. And you can say the illustration ends by yielding um, 100, 
sixty and thirty-four. One hundred sixty and thirty-four. Okay. Okay, so just a few more minutes here. Um, now, I want us to look at these four keywords that um, I've actually been able to identify ahead of time. So let me give you a few seconds um, to look for the meaning. So I, I'm sure you're in front of your laptops and um, maybe have, you're in front of your cell phone. You can go to Google uh, right now at least. And uh, what, what, does, what, does, what do these words mean? Uh, what do these words mean objectively? What does um, Miriam, Miriam's Webster's Dictionary say about hear and understand, bearing, bearing fruit and unfruitful? What, what do these words mean? Hear means perceive with the ear, the sound, okay. or inform. Okay. Ear, yeah. Okay, thank you. How about understand? What does understand mean? Perceive the intended meaning. Perceive the intended. Okay, what does bearing fruit mean? What, does, what could this mean? What does it mean to bear fruit? Yield, pa yield positive results. Yes. And unfruitful. What does unfruitful mean? Not producing goods. Okay. Okay. Now, um, again, as I mentioned, we're not going to be able to do, uh, you know, a, a longer time of reflection of what uh, this parable could mean. But I want you to really take this worksheet with you um, as, uh, as your assignment in your prayer time. But uh, let me uh, end with a few thoughts. Okay, with a few thoughts. So we want to ask um, ourselves um, some questions for understanding, right? Um, what are the keywords in this study? And we've identified four of them, right? Um, and we also want to uh, think about what do the seeds signify? And what do the soil signify? Who is the sower? So these are some questions of understanding that you can have. And what does this parable tell us about the sower and his characteristics? And lastly, what is the relationship between hearing and understanding the word? So I believe that you have a few minutes in uh, your breakout rooms um, and you have uh, the worksheets as well. So please do take those worksheets. Um, uh, I was, uh, it was mentioned to me that you'll have some time in your breakout groups to do this. So you do have some time. Uh, and later on, in a few minutes after that, uh, we'll, we'll just hear from you. What have you learned? Um, and then I will close as well. Okay. So thanks, everyone.